how to leverage your open house to get more clients, more business in your pipeline. Hi, I'm Paul R. Atkinson, and today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how you can leverage doing this open house, and it will bring you more business. So it's very important that you know that in the description, you could find more tools to help you to understand and comprehend this. So let's get right into this, because I'm excited to talk about it. When I was asked this question, you know, it's a very good question. How do you leverage <laughs> this open house, you know, to, to not, it, it's like you're not looking to sell the house. You're looking to get more clients. Well, that's a bit different, isn't it? There's a couple things that you can do and you should be prepared for. Well, number one, you want to make sure that you're driving traffic so you can really capitalize on this investment of your time and your money to do the open house because your intention is to get more clients. So drive the traffic there, and you could drive traffic by posting it on social media before the event, or at least, let's say, five to seven days before. You wanna drive the traffic, just think about that. Drive traffic, bring them in, bring them in. And then, once you get them in, to get these clients, there's some techniques to it. You wanna build the connection with them. And building connection can come from two things that I'm going to say to you right now, and, and it's, it's, it's in my book, of course, The Five Steps of the Sale. But the two things to build connection real quickly is the association technique and the mirroring technique. And the association technique, when you use it in an open house, is you simply just looking at the prospect, seeing something on them, or the way they speak, or the way they look, or whatever they have on, and you could associate with what they're wearing or where they're from or what they're doing or, or what the car they drive. That will help to build the connection so quickly. So we call it, the, in the five steps of the sale, we call that using the association technique. Another one is the mirroring technique. The mirroring technique, you're gonna be seeing that person. So let's say, for example, they're wearing their glasses, and you have your glasses put down. Well, put on your glasses. Let them see you as a person that's wearing glasses too, right? It's like a little mimicking, right? When they are filling out the sheet or the way they're standing, stand how they stand. You know, if someone stands a little bit like this, you know, you stand a little bit like that. But don't get caught doing that. Listen, I, I don't want you to get caught in that, but remember, in the description, you will find the link that will show you the five steps of the sale, how you can get connected with a prospect in 60 seconds, and how you can get them to like you, listen to you, trust you, and believe in you. So now you're using this open house, right? Let's go on past this. And you're wanting to get buyers and sellers. So not only are you making that contact with them and present yourself right, but you're also doing what I call the P5, the Paul Five. And in my first book, The Art and Science of the Real Estate Agent, Day One, Close a Deal, I talk about that extensively. The P5 is when you get a one-page flyer and a detailed view of the property, and you take them, and before the open house starts, like an hour before, you actually put the signs out and you know, you're trying to create people to come there and wait for you. And you, you want to go, the P5 means that you're going to take the one-page flyer and the detail view sheet, and you're going to knock on the door of the neighbors. And you're going to call your seller's name. Hi, how are you doing? I'm Paul Atkinson, the best realtor in the neighborhood. You want to hold the signs up like the, the flyers like this. And I'm with Gabrielle and John, and they're selling the house, and I happen to bring this for you. It's a detail view with all the pictures of it. Take a look. You want to see it? And let's have a little chat with them. And the most important thing that you should do when you're making this contact, because you want new sellers, you should ask them that powerful question. Who do you know that would like to live in the complex in this community? Is a relative of yours? Oh, maybe, maybe not. Then the other powerful question is, would you consider selling? Are you thinking about selling also? 
That's a great question. I always ask it. And, and they're very nice about it. You know, their body language is, well, we don't know yet. We're thinking about it. Or we've just moved here. It doesn't matter what the result is. It's not a no. It's just maybe later. Don't take it as a no. Whatever it is, you want to make sure that you get that person, that potential seller or buyer. They might want to buy something else. Name, email, and phone number. Tell them you want to send them a monthly, email them a monthly marketing trend so they could know what's going on. And they're going to want it. And you just get that information and you say, okay, I'll see you soon. And you tell them this. When you're going to buy or sell real estate, will you consider me first? I really like you. Say that just like that. It's all about selling. Selling! You don't have the skills and you need it. It's important for you to have that. That is one of the most productive things you can do to get more leads, more clients when you're doing an open house. Now, of course, the final thing I want to tell you to get more leads is when you're actually inside of the house now and you're showing the property or you're allowing them to go, allowing the people to go around, you know, have some selling skills where you're not only connecting with the people, but you're informing them of educating them of the house, obviously, so they can find value in you. They could say, oh, man, you're really knowledgeable. And don't be pushy. Kind of stand back. Don't be pushy. Don't be talking too much. And here's an important part. You should be able to ask them, what are you looking for in your next home? <laughs> Nobody ever asked that. They just want to push it down your throat. You just want, oh, and this house is this and this and that. Why don't you ask the people, what are they looking for? Yes, they came because they might be interested, but it would be good for you to say, well, I'm wondering, uh, what are you looking for in your next home? Say it like that. So they could tell you, well, we really, you know, we're wanting something like this. Or they might say, well, we kind of want this or that. And that would allow you to say, well, okay, well, you know, if this doesn't work for you, I have a few more options and I'm able to get it to you. Is this your correct email here? I'll send it to you later on today. And are you working with a realtor or not? Or will I be your realtor of choice? Very important. If they say they're working with a realtor, then you could say, okay, that's fine. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Thank you very much for being here. You can have your realtor contact me if they're interested in this house. But if there's 10 people that comes to an open house, I could tell you more than likely 50% of them or more will not have a realtor or they don't like their realtor. And that's where you can come in and get something done. I hope this was useful for you and you've got to rewind this and listen to it again and watch it again. And, and just remember in the description, you have the link that can help you to capitalize on your open house and, and get more leads from it. You can do that in the description. Remember to give this talk a thumbs up and a comment. Give us some feedback. But I want to tell you one thing. Remember, feedback should always be positive. Until next time, I will see you real soon. It's always a pleasure. Let's go get them, Tiger.